The 90-minute Sportsmax Zone for this Thursday continues and we go now to football. The Europa League began quarterfinal stage today and four intriguing games were served up. One of those, an all-Italian affair as AC Milan welcomed fellow Syria outfit AS Roma. Let's see how that unfolded. Roma in their change to Fugelis underway. Done again by Loftus Cheek and turned away by Spieler. Lukaku. Pellegrini through the middle if they can pick him out. Oh, it's deflected and brilliantly saved. Fabulous save by Manuel to keep out El Sharabi. Swept in by Dybala. It's Mancini. Scored the winner against Lazio in the City derby at the weekend. And now he's put Roma in front at the San Siro. But now it's Gianluca Mancini who rises highest. And who puts Roma in front. Mugno given no chance. been headed back across the face of goal and headed off the goal line not once but twice by Lukaku two really powerful headers Pulisic Reinders turned aside again by Salah Pulisic set free by Loftus-Cheek Reinders his cheek. Reinders. Kept out again by Sla. Badly. He almost caught the goalkeeper off guard. Gabia. Jibwez again. Getting beyond Spinazzola. Getting to the byline. And cracked against the crossbar by Giroud. Huge opportunity for Milan. 24 attempts for Milan, but it's Roma who emerged from this first leg in the San Siro with the win. Yeah, so another blockbuster match saw Premier League giants Liverpool hosting Atalanta with a team from Bergamo, Italy, looking to cause a major upset. Sporting over the two legs in the last round of this competition. Played in by Zappa Costa. And Kelleher can't keep it out. Skamaka scored again. Atalanta lead. Liverpool caught by an Italian break down the right. It's not an unfamiliar feeling for Liverpool this season. They've conceded first again. That's now happened in 20 of the 50 matches they've played in all competitions. And this is where it started. Coat miners timed it right. Simicast came rushing in. That was unwise. Zappa Costa not for the first time tonight. Zappa Costa. To Ketelera. Here's Skamaka. 2 0 Atalanta. Two goals for Gianluca Skamaka. was tucked away so coolly. Well, this is an unbelievable scoreline. Liverpool nil, Atalanta 2. Assuming he's onside, and it looks as though he is. Oh, he's well on. Van Dijk trying to stop the cross was playing him on. So boss lie. That was too casual. Skamak has got it. Look at Pasilic on the run. Skamaka plays it through for Edison, and there's Pasilic. 3-0 Atalanta. It just got a whole lot more unbelievable. Now he allows himself a smile. This is a famous night. 
for Ladea, the goddess. The most famous night in their whole history. And that third goal, well, what does that do to the tie with Liverpool to travel to Italy next week? Saposlai was at fault. Skamaka kept his call. Cool. Looked as though he'd missed the chance to pass a couple of times. But Edison had held his run. He didn't go too quickly. A shocker there at Anfield. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the other English team left in the competition is reigning UEFA Conference League champions West Ham. And they travel to Germany to take on Bayer Leverkusen with Javier Alonso's team one win away from the Bundesliga title and also eyeing their first European trophy. Let's take a look at the goals. Hoping to see the deadlock broken. Grimaldo. Tar. Boniface. Helped go and it in! The deadlock is broken! It's Jonas Hoffman! Finally, a goal for Bayer Leverkusen. A fabulous finish from Hoffman for his seventh goal of the season. West Ham undone by the corner. Tarr won it initially. Boniface had a crack. Vips with the corner. Lifted in by Hoffman. Boniface! They've scored from another corner. Calamitously for West Ham. But what a return for Victor Boniface. After four months out injured, he's come up with the goods in stoppage time. Once again, the set play does the trick. 2v1 from the short corner. In it went from Hoffman, who turns provider this time. A goal and an assist for him. And Victor Boniface, well, that's the sort of service he thrives on. And he found the bottom corner with a trademark header. Bayer Leverkusen 2, West Ham 0. It's unraveled for the Hammers. Yes, so Bayer Leverkusen getting the win there that a lot of people based on their current form in Bundesliga expected them to get. The final quarter-final match on the day saw Marseille uh, making a trek to Lisbon, Portugal to take on Benfica. The match ended 2-1 in Benfica's favour. Joining us now to recap the matches our football analyst Brent Sancho. Uh, Brent, I know we're anxious to talk about that shocking Liverpool result, but can we start with that uh, Serie A, all Serie A battle where AC Milan, 13 points better at the moment than AS Roma in Serie A, were upset by them in a game that, in open play and statistically, AC Milan were dominant in. I know this is a constant argument about whoever wins a game, it means that they were the better team. But there were many things about the game today that suggested that AC Milan were better but just unlucky. Very Mourinho-esque, wasn't it, by uh, AS Roma in terms of the, the victory today. And look, that's uh, sometimes that's the way uh, football games crumble, as you rightfully said. But uh, it's a two-legged tie at the end of the day, and I'm very sure you see Milan may look at things uh, as the possibilities move forward in the second time. But by or by, it, it's uh, very rare that you see a team play so well and end up on the losing end of things. And uh, I'm sure that uh, AC Milan, as I said, may have to take the positives out of it. Roma dug deep to make sure uh, that the scoreline remain as it is. But it's certainly uh, one of those results that was surprising when you looked at the balance of play. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, we looked at the highlights, which ran for a couple of minutes, and almost all of the highlights were played in AS Roma's defensive third. Uh, which, which was inclusive of uh, Romulo Lukaku, defensive header off the line, not once, but twice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it sums up, it sums up <clears throat> the type of afternoon that uh, you know, EC Milan had. Uh, and the chances, and, and of course, you will always argue that uh, nine times out of ten, these chances do go in. But uh, they just couldn't beat or uh, crack the red guard of, of, of Roma that uh, not necessarily were great defensively. But I think in that instance there that you see 
uh, in the replay. In some instances, they, they definitely ruined their luck. Yeah, and um, I know Inter are looking solid for Serie A and AC Milan are a little way off. But uh, AC Milan looking to rebound here and, and get themselves uh, past this quarterfinal stage. Let's go to Anfield now, uh, Brent, because that Liverpool result today was, was shocking. Um, we know there are upsets in football from time to time. And uh, you know that it isn't impossible for Liverpool to lose a match at Anfield to these opponents. But the 3-0 margin, a little hard to digest for the Liverpool fans. Yeah, it would be wrong of me if I started off talking about Liverpool and their poor performance because Atalanta was terrific today. Uh, I would love to check their metrics, Lance, in terms of the, the high-intensity sprints uh, that each of their players would have carried out throughout the game. Um, it was just, uh, uh, in terms of the, the energy levels, going first of all, going man, man for man at Anfield was a bold move uh, at the beginning of it. Uh, when I saw that, uh, of course, that approach tactically, I knew they were up for it because it needed a, a lot of energy to do that. And from minute one to 90 plus, Atalanta showed that energy. So start there as it relates to the performance. And then go into the fact that technically uh, and, and tactically, they were outstanding. They outplayed Liverpool for much of the match. And yes, of course, a lot of the conversation would be around Liverpool's poor performance. But you really can't take away from what we saw from Atalanta today. And it's probably, for me, Lance, one of the best road uh, 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 performances I've seen in European football for quite some time. Yeah, and the fact is, Brent, and you touched on it just now, if you're an away team, one of the strategies that you can go into a fixture with as a former international player yourself is to be aggressive, positive, and be on the front foot because you want to take the 12th man advantage from the home team. And uh, Atlanta pretty much did that today. Yeah, and, and what Atalanta. surprised me yeah, what surprised me, Lance, is, is how high they they of course confronted Liverpool. They, they didn't allow them to play out to the back. Uh, they made things quite miserable for them. And even when they broke the initial press, Liverpool that is, they got back so quickly in numbers that they made sure uh, that it was not it was not a comfortable possession for Liverpool. And even in the attack, in this goal that we just saw, you've seen at least five white shirts in the box. That's, that's players breaking their necks to get in, showing that effort, showing that endeavor, uh, and of showing that positivity. And in every single department, metric-wise or otherwise, that comes with the modern-day football, I think Atalanta won that. And it is it is a big, big statement, particularly when you think about how, how of course, how much European football and Anfield go like bread and jam. So it is one of those sorts of performances, as I said, as much as I would want to talk about how poor Liverpool was today, a lot of it was down to the way Atalanta approached this football game. Yeah, 33 match on beaten run at Anfield are coming to an end for Liverpool. Brent, a couple of points for me to make. One of them, usually when you see a side like Liverpool losing in a competition like the Europa League to a side like Atalanta, yes, that's exactly what I wanted to say, you go, wait, what? 11 did they start who did they leave out but in truth this was a pretty strong Liverpool team that was put out on the field by Jurgen Klopp not necessarily his strongest starting lineup but all the big names took the park eventually maybe with the exception of Alexander Arnold and we know that he's been out injured yeah you're right and and more to the point of course the the fact that uh, this is a Liverpool team that just played against Manchester United I believe it's about six changes that they made, but not necessarily wholesale changes, particularly when it comes to this competition. All due respect to it, we've seen teams use a completely different start in 11 for it. Yet, Jurgen Klopp went for what I consider a fairly strong Liverpool outfit. And again, I go back to the fact that this has been played at Anfield against the Atalanta team that many didn't give a, a chance. But that being said, they played and they would give everything for their chance. A lot of them... And you think a player like Harvey Elliott, for example, who was knocking on the door uh, for being a, a regular at Liverpool, he certainly had a quiet game and was substituted at the half. But you're right, in terms of the personnel that was there, and even to go further, the personnel that ended the game, I'm sure if Jurgen Klopp could have thrown on another strike, he probably would. But he couldn't, and what he did have at the end of it was a very frustrating night. And all of it is down to that man there in the picture and his team for putting up such a staunch performance in Anfield, something that, again, you very rarely hear
from teams that visit there, it is normally about Liverpool and how well they do in European nights at Anfield. It wasn't the case this afternoon. Credit to Atlanta. And who knows what will happen in that second leg in Bergamo. Yeah, Gomez, Konate, Van Dijk and Simakas at the back. McAllister, Endo and Jones in midfield with Elliot Nunes and Gagpo. The front three starting for Liverpool. Luis Diaz, uh, Sabaslai, Mohamed Salah, Diego Jota, Andrew Robertson all came on um, for the Liverpool team. So yes, a lot of strong personnel there. I have to ask you this one though, Brent. Kelleher in goal. How disappointed would he be and how disappointed would Jurgen Klopp be in a couple of those goals that he let in because I, I can't shrug that feeling that a couple of those probably should have been saved. Yeah, particularly the first one. I thought he could have done a lot better with the first one, uh, of course. Uh, it, did, it was hit with moderate power, but certainly not enough to beat a, a goalkeeper uh, from that distance and, and Keller maybe could have done better. I think even maybe even the third one as well, he could, there could be question marks there for, for, for what he was. I think his kicking overall, and if we are to, of course, appraise his, his performance, I think his kicking throughout the game was poor. Uh, and he just seemed very uncertain and unsure throughout the entire performance uh, that he put in this afternoon. And, and it would be wrong of us if we pointed the finger at him solely uh, for, to, for the defeat tonight, I guess, at Atlanta. Because as I said at the beginning of all of this, but, but Brent, in Atlanta, they were great. I don't mean to cut you, Brent, but 1-0 looks a lot different from 3-0. Yeah, but I think even though if you take that, the, the other chances that he probably could have done better with away, Atlanta probably could have scored a, some other, other chances that they did create. I, I think they had a couple clear-cut opportunities that uh, they just didn't finish. But uh, they, but they, they, didn't, but they didn't score them, that. Brent, and there were two that I am sure Jurgen Klopp will be having some strong words with his goalkeeper to say... Boy, I would take 1-0 as opposed to 3-0. But I, the question is, would it would have ended up 1-0? Because it seems like that Atalanta team was poised to go after 2, 3, 4, and 5. They, they played the part. And even when Liverpool started to push forward a bit more, they left a lot of doors open at the back. And, and to be fair, Liverpool were quite lucky uh, not to go through the head. But I do hold my hand up and say, yeah, Keller had some questionable saves that he could have made, uh, but he wasn't able to make it. But overall... It was an awful night for Liverpool at Anfield. Yeah, and Brent, um, Leverkusen on top of West Ham today. Um, having a close look at them today, how good are they? They're on the verge of closing out the Bundesliga title. Yeah, they're the real deal, Lance. And, you know, I was really hoping to see a Leverkusen versus Liverpool final. <laughs> but that may not happen now. Uh, but they are the real deal. Their movement is superb. Again, another team uh, that is very... You're not writing brilliant. off Liverpool, though, Brent, are you? No, not really, but it's going to be very difficult for them. To go so to you're writing off West Ham, Lance? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am more, I, I'm, I'm more likely to write off West Ham than I will write off Liverpool. Mm. <laughs> By the way, Mikel Antonio just, was in the starting lineup today, so that was good to see for West Ham. Yes. Yeah, that's, a, that's a strong statement, Lance, because uh, I tell you what, to come back from, from three down for Liverpool, and look, with all the attacking power that they have, uh, you wonder, uh, you know, if they can turn it around. And I want to show another thing. So, so let me ask you, Brent, no, just to be clear, and I'll, I'll put this to Ricardo as well, because you'll put me on the spot. If you're a betting person, you would more likely bet on West Ham overturning 2-0 against Leverkusen than Liverpool overturning 3-0 against Atalanta? I'll tell you yes, and I'll tell you the logic behind it. No, let me get let me, let me get Ricardo first. Yes for you as well. Right, go ahead, I want to hear Brent's logic. <laughs> <laughs> My logic is simple. This is a Liverpool team that yeah. is also fighting on the Premiership end, and they have they they're definitely going to put a lot more of their attention. The question I have is: Jurgen Klopp going to risk putting his players uh, into that second leg where they're going to have to put in a hell of a shift to get back into things? Uh, is he going to do that on a Thursday night, knowing that he has a, a very limited amount of fixtures left yes. to see on, and to win the Premiership? I think that's the question, and that's probably why okay. I put my behind where Sam. Okay, Not Ricardo. The, 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 the value of Liverpool, nothing to do with that. Brent is making sense. But listen, <laughs> if I know anything of Jurgen Klopp, he's going to try and win this tie. He's going to try. I, I hear you, Brent, but I think I, Jurgen Klopp is going to go I, all out 
to try and win this tie, I and he's going to believe that Liverpool can win I it I can't well. believe that you two are disagreeing with me on this, but <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's how it is sometimes. Brent, thanks, thanks for linking with us, brother, and we'll talk All again right. soon. All right, take care, guys. <laughs> Back with more on the Sports Mat Zone after this.